Hi everybody, this is John Watkins. This is our fourth and final video on our Viking cruise around the British Isles. In this video, I'm going to provide a little bit of information about life on board and also a final evaluation or report card on the cruise. A few notes and disclaimers. First, this was our first cruise on any cruise line, so it is not meant to be a comparison to other competitors. That said, we are pretty seasoned travelers. If it's a comparison to anything, I would say it's a comparison to Vikings marketing materials. Second, the facts in this video are believed to be correct, and I hope they're helpful, but if you're considering a Viking cruise, you need to verify them uh, because things may have changed and it's possible that I'm wrong. Third, any opinions expressed in this video are just that, opinions, and they're my opinions alone. Remember that others may have different opinions and you should draw your own conclusions. Fourth, I have no relationship with Viking other than as a passenger. We paid for our cruise just like the other people on board. This video is not sponsored by Viking, it's not supported by Viking, and none of the views expressed in this video should be attributed to Viking. Okay, this is kind of a long video, so I'm going to cut to the chase. My final score on a theoretical scale of 100 was 94. For life on board, that score would be higher, probably 98 to 99. However, with respect to the onshore excursions and some other things, I think there's some things Viking could work on and improve, and I think they can be improved. So that dragged the score down a little. That said, overall, we thought it was a very, very good cruise. Come along and I'll show you a little bit more. So if you want to know what a Viking cabin is like, you've probably seen other videos of this, but this is our stateroom. And it's a, a little mini suite, king-size bed, sitting area, desk, just lots of storage. Pan around here. It's hard to see. It's a closet. And uh, the bathroom is small, uh, but it has a uh, uh, a shower that is big enough and very functional, uh, sink and you know what you need. We have a uh, little balcony here. And uh, we're in Belfast. So we're on the uh, starboard or right side of the ship on deck five and we have two uh, two seats and a table out here we haven't spent much time out here but uh, it's available and here's a view of the room from uh, the other side it's not huge but it's, it's pretty big and very efficiently designed Here we are. This is on the deck of our stateroom. There's some uh, seabirds of some kind making noise. And uh, I just wanted to show you this scene of sailing on this smooth sea. There's some land over there. Don't know what it is. And then here, uh, here's looking down the ship. Here, uh, see if we look back. Look back. We we kind of get into the fog. It's just uh, uh, to me, it's kind of cool. Look at those. Uh, Waves off the bow of the ship. It's 
a long way down there, but uh, it's kind of pretty. And these are the White Cliffs of Dover. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning and we are coming in on the uh, Saturn Viking ship. And it is a beautiful, beautiful morning. This is Ulapool and the uh, ship's crew are lowering one of the tender boats that they carry with them. These are small boats that ferry you ashore when you can't dock directly at a location. Ferrying, uh, it's uh, lowering one down to get ready. That's kind of an interesting operation. So what are our final thoughts about the Viking cruise? Well, first of all, there are lots of things that Viking does almost perfectly. First of all, the booking experience was really good. We just called the 800 number and were fortunate enough to get Monte Black as our travel advisor, and he was just extremely helpful, answered all our questions, uh, followed up quickly, and it was just really pretty seamless. The onboard service was just fantastic, and this is something I think you'll find uh, a kind of a common theme about people who comment on Viking cruises. Uh, for us, it ranged from very good to just outstanding. The staterooms are great. Uh, we showed you ours earlier in the video. Uh, it was very comfortable, very well designed, and uh, we really liked it a lot. The ship design and comfort generally is just excellent. It's a beautiful ship. Uh, there are lots of areas, there are lots of different areas to explore, places to hang out. And even after two weeks on board, we didn't feel like we investigated every nook and cranny of the ship. Uh, there are just lots of things to do on board. The food uh, was very, very good. There are four main options on the Saturn, and they go like this. The first is the World Cafe, and that's on 7th deck. It has a nice view of uh, the uh, ocean and surroundings, and it's a really high-class cafeteria where the menu selection varies every day, and you can select whatever you want, and as much as you want, take it to a table, and uh, the waiter will bring your drink of choice. The second option is the restaurant, which is more of a white table type situation and uh, more formal. And uh, it has a, a menu that varies every day, but they also have a fixed menu of Viking favorites, which include sensibly, I think, a steak, uh, a chicken dish, and salmon. So 
I think anybody in your group is going to find uh, something to like in the restaurant and the service was just really, really good. The third option is the Chef's Table, which is a specialty restaurant and it requires reservations and your access to reservations depends on what level of stateroom you have booked. Um, it features a fixed menu with wine pairings and uh, you'll know in advance what the food selection is so you know if it's something you don't like you can change your option but uh, we went there and really enjoyed it we thought it was quite good. The fourth option is another specialty restaurant that requires a reservation called Manfredi's and boy does Viking push Manfredi's in their marketing materials. Well we went there twice and let's just say we were not terribly impressed. Uh, we didn't think the Italian food was very good at all. In fact, we felt that, you know, local restaurants in Georgia, where we live, uh, do a better job. Um, we did have a really good steak on our second visit, but we each chose a steak because we found the Italian food not that great. So, uh, you know, we didn't feel Manfredi's lived up to the hype. Um, However, other people really like it, so you know, uh, you have to try it out for yourself. One other thing I want to mention is that Viking has 24-hour room service. And this is a really good option if you have an early morning uh, excursion and uh, you don't want to you know, go to a restaurant and then come back to your, your cabin. You can just have the room service deliver breakfast. It's very, very good. It's, it was always on time. Uh, and we use that option probably, I don't know, five or six, maybe even more times. It was a great option. So the food is really good. There are a couple of other food options, but uh, I think I've covered the main ones. We found that Viking provides a lot of information about the history and background of the destinations and ports of call. Uh, it is, as they say, a thinking person's cruise. And for us, that was really helpful and interesting. We found overall that Viking was very transparent. Uh, we didn't have any surprises. Uh, they, they told us uh, you know, what was going to happen and for the most part it was exactly like what they told us. So we were very happy about that. Now there are some things that uh, in our view need improvement. And uh, there are not a huge number of them but there are a few things. The first is we found the airport transfer onto the boat in London was not very well handled. And uh, we had to wait in the airport. We were given misinformation about when the, uh, the bus to take us to the ship would arrive. Um, and we just felt it was badly handled. It, it took a long time. And uh, after you know an overnight flight to Europe, uh, it just was a very, very mediocre introduction uh, to Viking. So we think they need to do that better. Now on the other hand, uh, the air transfer out in Bergen uh, for the leg home was just handled beautifully. So maybe it's London, I don't know, uh, but we felt that could be better. Uh, the Wi-Fi on board just isn't very good. Um, I think Viking even admits it's spotty. Uh, well, we found it very spotty. Uh, occasionally it would work, but a lot of times it wouldn't work at all. So that's a problem. I think Viking knows this and I think they have a long-term plan to address it, but for the immediate future you just need to know your connectivity is going to be limited. We felt they could do a better job with the tender boats. Um, the tender boats, you know, they look really cool. You see one here in this photograph, but inside they have these hard benches that are, you know, very narrow and they're just smushed together and they sometimes would cram 50, it seemed like 50 or more people on the tender boat. I don't know exactly but whatever they hold they just seemed like people kept coming. Uh, and it, it's a very very uncomfortable arrangement being crammed in like sardines in a tent and uh, we feel like they could manage this process better, they could run more boats uh, they carry several on board and we feel they could do a better job with that. Um, also there's a certain level of, well I wouldn't call it hypocrisy, but certainly irony. Um, they are very big, Viking is very big on sanitation. For instance, when you go to a restaurant you have to 
as you enter, sanitize your hands. They have special sanitizing stations or even wash your hands, you know, which is great. I mean, hygiene's a good thing, right? But you're typically coming to the restaurant after you've gotten off a tender boat where you've been crammed in with a bunch of other people, uh, half of whom are coughing. And, uh, you know, I just feel that they could do a lot better job with these tender boats. Now, fortunately, you don't have to take a tender at all ports of call, but uh, some of them you do. Uh, we feel they could do a better job of vetting tour buses. Some of the tour buses we were on were just very uncomfortable, very cramped, crowded together. Uh, others were a little better, um, but Viking's a big player in the travel industry, and it just seems like, given what their you know market is, they could do a better job. And we feel that they could provide more comprehensive information about particular tours. Uh, we did not. Uh, enjoy particularly the Beatles tour in Liverpool uh, and we didn't uh, we were underwhelmed by the Wales tour and the, the, for instance the Wales tour uh, we were either on a bus or on a train the entire uh, tour except for lunch and uh, there were no there's only one opportunity to take a photo and that was a really lousy one uh, so we just felt that uh, you know if, if we'd known that we would not have taken that tour we certainly would not have uh, uh, paid for that experience if we had known what it was going to be. Now there's some things you need to know. Um, the first thing is, and you probably already know this if you're considering a Viking cruise, it is expensive, but you have to weigh that against the fact that just about everything is included. You know, all your meals, um, just everything. So, you know, it is expensive, but I think in terms of value, it's a pretty decent value. It can be a really old crowd. Um, you know, we're in our late, mid to late 60s, and we felt that uh, uh, we were youngsters uh, on this particular cruise. Um, we, uh, we did speak to one woman who works, uh, she's pretty much permanently on the ship, uh, working for a vendor, uh, running one, helping run one of the shops. And she told us that this crowd for this tour did skew really old. She said normally it's a mixture of 50s, 60s, and 70s. We found for this tour it was more of a mixture of 60s, 70s, and 80s. And, uh, you know, that can uh, be off-putting to some people, I think. Um, you need to really pay attention to the briefings and information. Uh, here's a, a briefing in progress. Uh, they have uh, these briefings every day about the next port and a lot of information, important information like when you arrive, when the ship's going to leave, when the excursions start, whether you're going to have to tender, etc. And you know, you need, to, you need to pay attention to them and if you don't attend, uh, it's not a problem because they videotape them and you can watch it later in your stateroom. Uh, they also have a little daily uh, newsletter that has the information which can also be very helpful. You need to know that you will be on tour buses and, as I've said, not all of them are very comfortable. So, you know, you're going around to, from port to port on this beautiful luxury ship, uh, but you're getting off and uh, you're getting on just a plain old tour bus. And uh, it'll be typically with a lot of people. So, you know, uh, unfortunately they don't offer uh, individual uh, Mercedes limousine experiences, but uh, it is what it is and you need to know that. We found that most of the tours are at least good, but some were a little underwhelming. Um, we mentioned that before, so I won't go over that again. Uh, and we also found that the paid tours are not necessarily better. Viking has a, an included tour for every port of call, and we found some of those were really good. For, we really liked the Liverpool City Tour, the Belfast City Tour, uh, and the Dublin City Tour was pretty good. So uh, the paid tours are not necessarily necessary or better. But we did like some of them. We really liked the St. Andrews Tour and the Loch Ness Tour. You need to know that the tours just provide you know, a taste of a, a locale. They don't provide an in-depth experience, despite what Viking says in its, uh, its advertising. Um, you're not going to get familiar with the nooks and crannies of any of these ports, but uh, you will see a lot of them, so that's kind of the trade-off, you know. 
And then, you, you know, you might also want to consider booking independent tours. We did not do that, but if we take another Viking cruise, we might. Uh, but you have to remember that you have to be back on board by uh, the particular designated hour or the boat will probably leave without you. And I think Vikings want to wait if it's got, you know, 30 or 40 people on one of their tours. Uh, I think they're going to make sure everybody's on board. But uh, I'm not sure they'd wait for one or two passengers or three passengers on an independent tour. So, you know, it's an option, but you need to keep that in mind. So there you have it. I hope you found our series of videos helpful, and uh, if you're considering a Viking cruise, I would strongly recommend you look at them. I think they do a really good job. We are already looking at another cruise on Viking, this time perhaps a river boat cruise, uh, and if we uh, do one, I'll probably post some more videos in the future. Take care. See you next time.